Greetings, family. I am Advocate Puleng. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I want to welcome all my new subscribers. Thank you for joining the family. In this YouTube channel, we are family. Today, I want to talk about how to avoid deaths. Let me start by with a disclaimer. I'm not an expert in this field. So whatever it is that I'm going to share, it will be from my own personal experience as somebody who has traveled that journey. It will also be based on research and comments by people that I deem to be experts in this field. So let us learn together. You know, the first thing that you can do, which is very obvious for all of us, is to come up with a budget. Coming up with a budget is very easy, but don't just budget but also stick to the budget because it's, it's very possible to deviate from your own budget. I've done it in the past where I would draft a budget, but at the end of the day, I don't stick to it. So don't be like the old me. Draw a budget and stick to your budget. The second thing, buy within your means. Here is my own principle. If you can buy it cash, it means you cannot afford it. And I repeat, if you can buy it cash, it means you cannot afford it. So if that is the case, what is it that you should do? It means that you should wait for a time where you can afford it. You know, there was a time in my life where I needed um, a comfortable piece of furniture. It was sofas, in fact. What I did was I sticked with whatever I had at that time, no matter how old it was, until such time I was able to amass money to buy those sofas cash. You know, in South Africa, I don't know about other countries, there's something that we call HP, higher purchase. It means that this is something that you can buy and pay by way of installment. Sometimes you can pay a deposit. Sometimes you don't even pay a deposit then they give you an opportunity or a chance to pay it in a space of 24 months, 12 months, 36 months. And the longer the time, the more the interest rate that you'll pay. So the best thing is to stick it out with what you have until you are able to afford it and, and pay it cash or buy it cash. The other point, beware plastic money. I know that these days we all as societies moving away from paying with cash. We are becoming now cashless society. There's recently something that has been introduced in South Africa. I know that in Kenya they call it Mpesa. Um, South Africa, they are introducing something like that. But except for that, we're also having different kinds of debit cards, credit cards, cards that we pay with. You know that card, that debit card, once you begin to swipe and swipe and swipe, it's so easy to swipe. But it can, that swiping of a card can land you in trouble because you may be swiping and thinking that you still have money when you don't have, because as you were swiping, you were not counting. You were not calculating, you were just swiping. It was so nice to swipe. 
So that is why I'm saying avoid plastic money. And this takes me to the, my next point, credit cards. Avoid credit cards. You know, I was told before that, no, you have to have one, at least one debt that can prove that you are a responsible person and that will lift up your credit record. Look, I've been in instances so many times in my life where I had to buy a house, more than three, four times where I, I bought a house, which was bonded, but I'd never had an, a credit card. I never had other cards like for clothes or whatever. I mean, clothes is something that you can buy cash. And if you don't have cash to buy it, it means that you cannot afford it. So you don't have to buy that dress. You don't have to buy that pair of shoes. Because you know what? Some of us, especially women, I'm sorry for tear stereotyping. We just continue to buy all these dresses, all these shoes, and we've got so many in our cupboards. So much so every day you have to iron because your cupboard is too full and your clothes are becoming crispy. The dresses that you haven't even worn for five years, but you're not even thinking of, okay, if I haven't worn it for five years, it means that I don't need it. I had once had somebody saying that. If you haven't worn it for five years, it's a sign that you don't need it. How about giving it to somebody else? Instead of you just piling, 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 even the wardrobe is so full. You know, I was once shocked. I saw one woman in America. She rented a flat where she stays with her son. And next door, she rented another flat, not bought, rented another flat just for her clothes and for her jewelry. Ah, maybe I'm too strict, but what kind of a life is that? Where you don't afford to buy a house, but you can rent two spaces and the other space is for your clothes and for your jewelry and for your shoes. Huh. I'm not saying people shouldn't enjoy their money. If it's the life that you can afford, maybe. But to be honest, I was taken aback. In my view, there are some debts which are unavoidable. Two main debts that are unavoidable. It's a car, buying a car. It's buying a house. In South Africa, it's a mortgage bond. I'm sure in other countries as well, mortgage bond. You engage in what is called a mortgage bond. But even then, if you have to engage yourself with those two that let it be within your means. You know, what somebody once taught me when I was growing up that you can never stay in a house Actually, you can never drive a car which is more expensive than a house, than your house. In other words, if your house is worth 1 million, your car can be 1.5 million. Your car must at least be half a million. Those are just examples. You know why? Because a house is an investment. A house is an investment. The value of a house goes up every day but the value of your car goes down every day just when you put a key in that car and leave that garage the value of that car has gone down already so which one would you want to spend more on obviously it's your house because your house you will sell it maybe even at double price in future Whereas your car, it will never ever, the value will never ever go up. It can only come down. Now, here is my other famous one, which will be the last one. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul. I just hope that's how they say it. Because some other people, when they are in debts, they go and borrow from somebody else to pay the other person that they owe. Avoid that temptation. Live within your means. 
Don't compete with your Joneses. Don't compete with your neighbors. Now, if you happen to be lucky enough and you are not in debt, please use some of these principles that I, I have mentioned. Stay away from debt. And if you are in debt already, listen very carefully. Do not condemn yourself. Don't feel condemned. Just come with a plan, what I call an exit plan, of how am I going to come out of this messy situation. Make goals for yourself as to by when you will be out of those debts. I know that sometimes it's not as easy as I'm saying it, but come with an exit plan, come with a strategy as to how you're going to come out of it. If, say, for example, you have debts worth 20,000, because, by the way, you have to start by sitting down and calculating all your debts, all these monthly state, state uh, payments that you have to make to such an extent that you're not even looking forward to month end. There are so many people who are not looking forward to month end because by month end already, you know that all this money, they are going somewhere. You cannot even enjoy your own salary. It's a situation of from hand to mouth. And most of the time is because of debts. So the most important thing is that you have to begin to tell yourself from now onwards, I'm going to come with an exit plan. I'm going to come up with a goal as to how I'm going to get out of the situation. Sit down and calculate all your debts. In the example that I mentioned earlier on, maybe you, your debts are worth 20,000. And you, by when do you want to be out of, of those debts? Come with a timeline. And come with a realistic amount and a measurable amount. How much can you afford to pay? If it's 20,000, and then you decide I'm going to pay 2,000 every month, if that is realistic for you, and obviously it's measurable and it's specific time and it's specific and it's realistic. That's how you, you set your goals. We've talked about it before. You can go to my one of my videos that talks about setting realistic goals, setting goals and how you go about it. So this is one of the goals that you'll be setting for yourself that by December, I'll be out of that. And it must be measurable, it must be specific, it must be realistic because it's all it's obviously time bound. So you tell yourself, I'm, I'll be paying 2000 every month. And obviously you'll become successful once we have a plan and you've put it down in writing. Because you must remember the Bible says, if you have a vision, put it down in writing. Put it down in writing. Put it somewhere, maybe in your diary or in your journal. Put it down. If you are a Christian, you pray, pray about it. Help, ask God for help. Ask God for help. You know, I once had a plan like that. And by the, that, by the time that time arrives, if that is correct English, I was out. I was out of it. You know, if you believe in the supernatural, supernaturally, one of it had to be canceled. I was excused. And I was able to meet that deadline, that the specified time that I had stated for myself. So come out of a debt. Because you know what the Bible says. I'm going to read three, few scriptures that talks to this issue. The first scripture is in Proverbs 22, verse 7. Here the Bible says, the rich rules the poor. The rich rules the poor. <laughs> and the borrower is a servant of the lender. So if you have borrowed money, you must know that you are a servant to the one who has borrowed you. We all know that how slavery happened. People were sold. They were taken from the continent of Africa to other nations as, sold, as slaves. They were sold. Now, these days, the way the system is, 
you volunteer your slavery by borrowing. So from now onwards, when you are about to borrow, you must just know that you are enslaving yourself. You are automatically surrendering yourself as a servant to the lender. And you don't want to be a slave, especially in this time. The second scripture is in Romans 13, verse 8. It says, Oh, no man, not anything. Oh, no man, anything. Oh, no man, anything. But to love one another. For who that loves has fulfilled the law. So according to scripture, we are not supposed to owe no man anything. You know, I've realized that every time when God says, don't do this, it is always to our own advantage. Owe no man anything but to love them. Now, our next and our final scripture is in Luke 14, verse 28, which says, before you build a tower, sit down and count the costs. Before you build anything, it's a tower. Here the Bible says a tower. Before you build a tower, sit down and count the costs. In your case, it may not be a tower. It may be something that you want to do. It may be building a house. It may be you want to resign, you want to go and study. It may be you want to take your child to a private school. The question is, have you counted the costs? In everything that you want to do, have you sat down? Have you counted the cost? Is it something that you can afford to do? Or you're just taking it by faith? Is it something that you will be able to do? Or are you going to build that house and stop somewhere in the middle? Or do you have a plan? Do you have a plan to achieve that vision? You see, that is why every vision has a mission. There's a vision which you write down and there's a mission statement. The mission statement is the how part. How are you going to do it? So here, the Bible is encouraging us. The word of God, which is the word of God, is enjoining us to sit down first. You have a plan, that's good. You have a vision, that's good. You have to be a visionary. Even the word says, my people perish because they don't have a vision. So it's very important that you have a vision in that area. But sit down and count the cost. I hope you found this helpful. May the Lord bless you. And may he shine his face on you. Please, if you haven't subscribed, do consider to subscribe. Thank you. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.